How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night, May 7th, 2025 is the date, 8.50 p.m. local time, California time, that is. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.5 up into the Alaska area. Notice a little bit of movement kicking off here across the West Coast today. Let's go ahead and check this out. See what we got going on here with some elevated earthquake activity, mainly San Francisco region southward here. A little bit of activity stirring up north as well. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, some activity stirring up off the Southern California coastline in a rather odd location here. There's really not a whole lot of fault systems out here, but a 4.1 earthquake coming in uh, way off the coast, but again in a, a very strange location. But we've noted uh, some increasing movement out here across Southern California, mainly along the Garlock Fault shear zone southward. Quite visible, though, if you back out and look at the entirety of the West Coast here, pretty much uh, oh, up into the Intermountain West area, Yellowstone, down through Nevada, and uh, throughout Northern California. Just got uh, a lot of activity here in the last 24 hours. Highly noticeable. There in Southern California, one earthquake, oh, I should say two earthquakes out here. Uh, one in Nevada, one in the Malibu area this morning. That is on the Santa Monica Fault. Uh, but generally, a lot of small microquake activity being noted across Southern California with that uptick. And the movement stops here. Um, looks like it's right around the creeping section. The northern segment here uh, is where it's halted in the past, you know, I'd say, a couple weeks to this area north where it's been awfully quiet here around San Francisco. Now, there was a handful of earthquakes up here ooh, yesterday, the day before. Uh, but then it just dramatically stopped all of a sudden as well. So something's going on out here. i got to watch that pretty closely. Northern California, a handful of earthquakes up here as well, including a three-pointer, 3.9. Off on the Mendocino Fault Zone, a little earthquake here. Uh, looks like that uh, is from today as well, a little 1.9. A couple hours later, it looks like. This one a little bit deeper, though, 11 miles underneath the area. Uh, more than likely associated here with the Cascadia train, uh, strain, <laughs> excuse me. That's a new, uh, definitely not a new word there. Let's see here. Let's pull up the trimmer map here this evening. See if we got anything going on there across Northern California. Uh, and we do. Got uh, nothing big but 17 epicenters underneath this area. That could be why we're seeing... Uh, this earthquake activity stir up further along the locked area and uh, these little adjacent uh, fault bound uh, plate boundaries as well so keep an eye on that also some movement stirring up inland and in northern california as well got uh, looks like a 2.7 outside of red bluff a couple other earthquakes here as well uh, these are very shallow uh, earthquakes there's some surface fractures going on probably from the uh a whole bunch of strain out here against the Cascadia. Uh, up into the Washington area, Mount St. Helens, a couple smaller earthquakes here. Been somewhat active in terms of earthquake activity, about 16 earthquakes in the vicinity of Mount St. Helens in the last week. I did pull up the uh, seismograph station there in that area. There's a couple small spikes showing up um, across that uh, volcano. You can see them out there on the uh, previous day as well. Very small earthquake activity, really no increasing uh like far as dramatic activity goes you know like a, a swarm or any magma movement but uh, a notable increase there in earthquake activity in the last week across mount st helens looks like between three to oh yeah about three kilometers or so this one's a 10 or 10 mile deep one here further away from the mount st helens area uh, nothing major going on out there across the northern end of the cascadia for now um, earthquake activity at Yellowstone kicking up out of the blue earlier this morning. It looks like they've added a few more earthquakes here to the total tally, but 38. Uh, I guarantee you there's a lot more than that, though. Let me show you guys the Yellowstone overview. Uh, there we go. Around Maple Creek here is where the epicenter of the earthquake activity is happening, and that is a bunch of earthquake activity in a short amount of time period there. Had... Uh, Oh, looks like between 3.30 and 6.30. Uh, a little bit extending on that as well, um, where we had nothing but just almost continuous earthquake activity out there across this area of Yellowstone. 
resulting in probably a couple hundred earthquakes. I know the USGS has only shown 38 out here, but that's just the ones they can specifically locate and uh, you know put a number and, and whatnot onto it. But uh, maybe they'll get to these other ones. I don't know. Either way, there's a lot more than 38 earthquakes out here. And uh, kind of interesting because we really haven't had any type of earthquakes forming there across Yellowstone in quite a while. That is outside the Yellowstone caldera. Yellowstone caldera right here in the black uh, outline. So happening over across these uh, couple different fault systems here around the Hebgen Lake region. Uh, aside from that, uh, the rest of the park, no abnormal activity. Just a little interesting event there. And I think it's, uh, again, I think it's a sign of the overall pressure increasing out here across the North American continent here, the western area. Uh, it's highly visible down through Utah. A um, lot of signs showing away from the plate boundary, on the plate boundary, Southern California, offshore, uh, even inland here across the oil field starting to show some strain uh, resulting in some further earthquakes out here. So not uh, not a result of magma movement, but just uh, general fault earthquake activity out here. Looks like it's around the, around the Hebgen Lake Basin, a couple unnamed faults out there. There's been some big earthquake activity out there in that uh, area historically. Uh, through the Yellowstone region, or uh, excuse me, Texas area out here. A couple threes, a couple twos, 23 earthquakes or so out in the oil fields of Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, New Madrid seismic zone, uh, one earthquake, nothing new to report there, a little 1.9. Uh, the world view out here looks like we got a little activity along the South Sandwich Trench subduction zone down here for a 4.6. A little bit of activity up along the Curl Kamchatka as well, along the northern end. Things uh, pretty quiet, though, across uh, the area of Japan right now, but continue to keep an eye there on the Nankai Trough. Uh, some earthquake activity across the Java Trench, stretching through the Indonesia Islands region, but a lot of that from yesterday. Uh, really nothing new to report. Maybe the newest one's going to be back here a little bit further east along that plate boundary uh, with a 4.9. Uh, just outside the Solomon Islands region. New Zealand, 3.1. Shallow earthquake there on the plate boundary. Some activity out in the uh, uh, triple point area. Out in the Indian Ocean here. A couple earthquakes showing up on the map. In the mid-Indian Ridge, 4.7 and a 5.0 there today. A little interesting movement. 4.5 there. That was way early this morning, though, it looks like. Let's see here. No newer activity across Iceland to report for now. Just uh, some older movement from last night. But uh, we'll kind of keep an eye on things here, see how it goes. Got the West Coast on the move. South America, 4.4 coming in right now across the, uh, well, it looks like the Chile area. A bunch of deep quakes there showing on the uh, Earthquake 3D globe. So we'll kind of watch things, see how it goes overnight. Flaring activity, well, really nothing new to report. Looks like we got a little sea flare movement kicking up here. Mid sea flare, um, nothing spectacular, but uh, let's see where that is originating from. Uh, looks like maybe this sunspot, the massive one that's been facing us for a little while. One thing I've noted here throughout the last couple of years is that these big sunspots that are you know, massive in size, really don't start getting active until they're out of the Earth-directed view. A little bit of a uh, sea flare activity from that sunspot, 4079, a massive sunspot area. Let's take a look here at complexity. Really not seeing all that much in terms of growth around that region. Maybe up here, but uh, I still don't think it's uh, in the in the in any type of stage here to produce any stronger flaring. Same for this one. It's got a clear-cut core. And, uh, well, this one's kind of fading off as well. So really not a whole lot of hope uh, if you like these stronger flares. Maybe a chance for some further sea flare activity. Uh, but M flare around 45% chance. These guys showing an X flare uh, possibility around 5. But it's more than likely less than that. Uh, no major aurors in the forecast there for now. Maybe a G1 class storm coming up. Uh, looks like on the May 9th time period. 
Let's see here. Where's my um This is some this is called something different now. I thought I bookmarked this, but maybe I didn't. Uh my dashboard's right here. There we go. I need to update. Well, how come that works now? <laughs> oh, they added communities there into the uh, link. Anyway, I wanted to see what was uh, the cause of this G1 class storm coming up. Really? <laughs> wow. That, <laughs> that doesn't look like much. How is that stirring up a G1 class storm? Earth here in the green, the sun... Uh, in yellow I'm guessing maybe uh, right, man okay I don't see it but there is a G1 class storm in the forecast maybe 30 to 70 percent chance there we'll see what happens with that I'm just, I'm just not seeing it okay um let's see what else is there Uh, Storm Prediction Center for severe weather. Looks like they added a little sight risk here for tomorrow across Texas and over here around the Tennessee area. Tornado threat down ex uh, extreme southern Texas here in the 2%. Mainly some wind and some hail threats tomorrow. Uh, nothing major in the on the horizon as far as any severe outbreaks go, but we'll continue to watch that because May is uh, historically a very active month here for uh, tornado and just in general severe weather activity. All right, uh, let's see here. Take a real quick glance at the map once again. We got Clear Lake Volcanic Field up here showing a lot of activity, but uh, that's normal. Uh, but also some activity stirring up outside of that region. A couple smaller quakes. San Francisco has gone absolutely quiet again. I do think, still think there's a probability here of seeing something larger near term. But uh, in general, I think we should be on guard across the West Coast just because of all this activity. I mean, it's fairly evident here that uh, there's some big time pressurization going on across the West Coast right now. All right. Uh, we'll see you guys back out here for the Thursday morning update. Have a good one. I'm headed to bed. Take care.